So normally, I'll go out in van and I'll go out and collect someone's bike. But today, it's different. Because today, I'm going out to collect my own bike. I've been saying for a while I want to get back into track days and do a few track days. And uh, I'm off to go and pick it up. The deal's already done. I'm off to go and pick up a CBR 600. Uh -huh. It's a non-runner, it's got a problem with the wiring, won't start up, no fuel pump prime, and I've got a decent deal on the bike. Not what I really wanted to pay, but it's a decent deal. What I'm planning on doing is, I'm planning on doing this, doing a little build for the YouTube channel, and uh, I'm gonna follow it all for the YouTube channel. Follow the track day, follow the build, I'm gonna put some colors on the bike, but I'm gonna do it for less than three grand. We're gonna go out, and I'm gonna set myself a challenge. The challenge I'm going to set myself is to go to Cadwell Park and overtake at least 10 litre superbikes of a value of between 10 and 15 grand. So, and the point I'm trying to prove is that you don't have to spend an absolute fortune to go out and have some fun on track, doing track days. I don't even know if I can do it. I'm 47 now, I've not actually ridden on track in anger on a superbike in six years. And back then I would mediocre mid-pack kind of rider I'm, I'm fast but I'm not the top end of the fast group fast went on an open pit lane track day and got my horse handed to me by all the racing lads uh, loads of racers were there on that day practicing and uh, they really they, they showed me how shit of a rider I am or I am uh, so yeah so the plan is less than three grand bike tires maybe a quick shifter but the first thing I want to do is get this bike actually running it doesn't run job number one get it running so we're off to see chris now uh, off to rotherham uh, go pick the bike up exciting time Ooh, trust me mate it won't be started <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did try didn't you starting of, of an adventure yeah Definitely, six years off of it. This is the first bike I've had. It's a Sony G6R. Oh, broke it. Start with an adventure mucker. Ah, on it, man, on it. Happy days. <laughs> Pulls that chock out, lad. That full box. In fact, no, I'll put it in there. Just straighten it up for it. Great See you later. We'll catch you soon. That's it. So, project on. Project on. Again, with the wiring. Mm. I just got back from work. And all I've been thinking about all day is what's stopping this from firing up. There's no fuel pump prime. No fuel coming out of fuel pump whatsoever. Um, the wiring to the relay is dead. So there's a few things it could be. I, I want to test the ECU, but there's no way of testing it on a bench. You can't just bench test it. So I need another bike, another R R4, exactly the same, to plug the ECU in. If that bike starts up, we know that ECU's good. But what I've had a little thought of today, while I've been thinking about it, there's a few sensors that could be on it. We've got a switch for the side stand, which I'm sure is on this loom still. And if that's got a, a, a broken connector or something like that, that'll cut the ignition because it's an inhibitor. Or there's a tilt switch. So, just cut the wires to the tilt switch. And read on the internet, <laughs> if you touch these together, that will bypass the tilt switch, and then we'll know that it's a faulty tilt switch if we get power back. But most importantly, we'll hear it fire up for the first time. Mm. 
but let's just off this tilt switch. So the problem was that the fuel pump wasn't priming. Yeah, we've got no fuel pump and I don't know if we've got spark because we've not got as far as checking spark. So let's hope this fixes it. So there's no immobilizer, so it can't be the immobilizer. Okay, wired that. That bypass now. Let's hope it's not the expensive uh, ECU. We've still got that. Now it's positive, I just heard a relay click. I had two relays click. Oh, that's a fuel pump relay. Yes. So the power. Yes. Right, so let's get this put back in. Uh, I don't want to get fuel everywhere, so. Let's connect the fuel rail back up. Oh, this is so exciting. So, Theoretically, no reason. Now, if, that, if that relay is clicking, that should prime, and then there's no reason why it shouldn't start. Yep. I'm actually nervous. <laughs> oh my god. just to isolate that it was the original loom that were problem and not a faulty power commander which was stopping the fuel pump. So we just took that out of the equation uh, for, just for a diagnosis. I'd forgotten all about the, the tilt sensor uh, cutting the fuel and for, for being a reason why uh, the fuel pump weren't priming. It's because I'm not a full-time mechanic. It's these things you just forget about when you've not been doing it for so long. And I've not I've not been around race bikes for five years. So but yeah, happy days it starts. If anybody knows if these are all blanked off, but they're like genuine blanks. They're all clip ends and they've all got plugs in and no prongs inside. So if anybody knows if this is a kit loom, let us know in the comments. Because it's it was advertised as having a kit room. It's definitely a kit ECU because it says FIM on it. That is true. 
Let's see my own battery on it. It's been played with at MCT. Do on. It's super clean. Chain's been well maintained. Looks fairly new to be fair. Chain and sprockets. Tires have been well run in. Let's find out if we were a pussy or not. We were right before. Oh no. He's had it quite over there. Only a tiny bit left on the edge. Uh, got braided lines. Got a pile of fairings to paint there. This is going to look beautiful. They look like Samco hoses, or at least aftermarket silicon ones. In good condition. We took the power commander off, diagnosed the fault, and now we're going to refit.
fingers. A few things I want to sort on bike. We've found the hose at the front, which is a little bit too close for comfort to exhaust, and that exhaust will get glowing red hot, so that will melt straight through there. And then we've got coolant everywhere, which is breakdown number one. I want to tidy that up so it looks a bit of a mess. Not that you can see it through fairings, I'm not sure if you can, you might be able to. Uh, Look at that, it's a top little bag. Definitely has changed them grips. You can actually see them. They've been zip tied on. So, we've got some new medium rentals going on there. Got the steering damper to fit. If anybody's got a quick shifter for one of these, or if you know if I can run that as race shift instead of road shift, because I don't want that to foul on this pipe, can you do that? Or if not, how do we get round it? If anybody knows how you do that, leave us a comment or get in touch with me PM. But the quick shift is what I'm really after. I could do one of them. And I'm on a budget as well, people. Yeah, I'm tight. If you want to see more at build, hit subscribe. It's that way. That way. Hit subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. It'll help us out anyway and we'll get more work. Get more bookings for transport. That's that's us. That's what we do. That's what we're doing this for. We're not doing it to show off and look good on track. Because more than likely, I'm going to win ourselves a tear here. Oh, and if you've got a tilt sensor kicking around your garage, give us a shout. I'll have that off you. So if you want to see an old man go around Cabwell Park, more than likely go out of a tit. We're going to record all of it. So click there. Subscribe. <laughs>